Alrighty, so this time we have travel budget. Just going to make my nice header. Love a good header. And we're just going to uh, pick some areas that we might need to spend on in the travel budget. So flights, accommodation, meals and drinks. So i.e. cocktails, <laughs> uh, activities. And lastly, no, not quite, gifts and then incidentals. So this is just stuff that you didn't plan for. It's always good to have a budget for that. Now I'm going to make this look all nice. Keeping in mind, you could easily create this budget on pen and paper, but the fact that Excel has formulas will be an absolute godsend in this scenario so you could muck around writing this down in a journal but I'd recommend using a spreadsheet. So you want your budget and then what you actually spend or versus sort of what you actually booked and we're going to have a look at the totals and lastly we want to know what the variance is. I've definitely spelled that incorrectly Look at me just looking at it for a minute. No, it's not right. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to make this look pretty as well. I want to have all the boxes uh, separate and then just make these as headers. Same with this column, a little bit bigger and bold. Right, so let's set our pretend budget. Um, keeping in mind, I don't think I've added this in yet, but we think we want to spend $5,000. And another really cool thing that I like to do is select all the cells that are going to be dollars and then hit dollar sign. So it just calculates in dollars. It just looks a little better. So $5,000 is what, in my mind what I think I would like to spend on this particular holiday and it's one week in Bali. So like that's a fair bit of money but I'm going to be pretty extravagant and this is just an example I don't expect anybody to spend five thousand dollars in Bali so in my mind I think the flights will be about eight hundred dollars I'm going to use some formulas here so I think per night a hundred and fifty dollars so 150 times seven meals I'm kind of thinking <sighs> Oh, it's a bit tricky to know in Bali because things are a bit cheaper, but what if we go $50 times 7, so $50 for a meal? Then I've realized that that's just one meal and there's actually three in a day. So let's make it $100 a day on meals because we're going to eat out the entire time. Uh, I'm intending on having a lot of cocktails, so $70.00. And then I realized, let's break that up. Let's say $35 per cocktail, which is extravagant, times two times seven. So I'm planning on having two really extravagant cocktails per day. Activities. These are just things like some uh, a day spa and like a rock climbing activity, a jet boat, just some stuff that I've googled online and I've put like a rough estimate of what I think that will cost and while I'm there I really want to buy my nieces and nephews some presents so I budget about $50 for the four of them and incidentals just off the top of my head I'm thinking $500 so let's add that up and we've come to $4,500 so that's pretty cool like that's actually less than I Thought this trip was going to cost. Just going to have a play around now with the different formulas. Oops, I've accidentally added the two totals together, so I'm just going to press back on that. I'm going to delete out my first budget and then put in what it actually tallied up to. So I'm going to make this the green uh, box because green is good and that's what we want to stick to. And for some reason, my mouse is not working and it didn't keep the green. So I'll just try again. Green. Right. Now, we want our actual to be yellow because that's sort of in between. It's kind of like, mm, yeah, not too bad. And we want to make our variance red because that's what we've 
more than likely gone over budget in. Right, so when I actually start booking things, um, that's when I soon find out the actual cost. So I quickly find out my flights are actually a thousand. And what I want to do is just add in some formulas here to work out the difference. So minus $200, I'm out of pocket $200 for the flights already. So it's not looking great. If I add some formulas in here to each of my cells, then as we add the figures in, they will they will pre-populate. So I budgeted 150 for accommodation. Turns out it's only 145, the one that I'm looking at. So another quick hack, if you move that little box down, it carries through your formula. So that's a really cool thing. So you don't have to add the same formula to every cell. So as you can see in accommodation, we've saved $35, which is neither here nor there. Uh, our meals ended up being a bit dearer because we went to like super fancy restaurants. So I'm out of pocket 140. And then we move on to drinks. And like you could do this spreadsheet after you come back from holidays or you could actually look at these restaurants that you plan to go to and look at their average meal costs and work out like a really standard actual cost so same with the drinks activities worked out a little dearer gifts were cheaper because it's barley and the incidentals i've just allowed for a little more because it's barley <laughs> do i need to say any more so our original budget was five thousand dollars and as you can see we sort of changed the budget to four five but our actual is coming closer to the five thousand so it's, it's not terrible but for argument's sake, let's just say I think to myself, no, if I want to stick to the four or five, that's, that's what we've kind of budgeted for now and I've got my mind set on it. So knowing that we're already $425 over budget, I look for areas that I can save in. So incidentals, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut that. I want to keep that just in case. I have a little hunt around on the internet and I find that there's actually just as good accommodation for 130. So I've saved uh, about $100 in accommodation, which is great. I think realistically about my meals and I think, well, I'm probably not going to be eating extravagantly on my first night and the night that we fly out. So I changed that to five nights. And then I just put like a cheaper amount. So we're doing 120 for the five nights and then say just $50. Like I'm probably just going to buy some McDonald's. So that brings the meals down to being perfectly on budget, not a cent to spare. I don't really want to skimp on the activities because that's what I'm going there for. So maybe um, I could cut back on my cocktails and when I think about this too I'm not going to be drinking cocktails on the day I arrive plus the day I leave so I just take those out so we're just drinking cocktails really expensive ones for five days that brings us to $60 so all we are out of pocket now is $60 now that's neither here nor there I already know I don't want to skimp on anything else my flights I can't get any different my accommodation I don't want to change my meals, they're pretty reasonable. The drinks match them. So I think of some other options. The activities and the incidentals are the two things I'm absolutely not budging on. So I think about if I continue to work up until this holiday, which potentially could be a long time <laughs> due to COVID. So this is a pretty unrealistic thing to say will be happening this year. So I know that I get time and a half uh, at work and this is just a pretend hourly rate but I thought I'd just lowball it or go for something that's sort of like an average minimum wage for most um, awards. So let's say I'm on $25 an hour. My overtime rate, if I did do overtime, would be my rate times time and a half, $37. Not bad. I tend to not do much overtime in this scenario. So the difference that we need to make up is obviously in our red box, so it equals the $60. 
So then let's just work out how much overtime do I need to do to make up this amount? And if I'm really strict, I would just put this overtime money that I earn straight into my travel savings. So it works out I need to do 1.6 hours. Let's just change that from dollars. So 1.6 hours of overtime and I don't need to skimp on anything else in my budget. Super realistic and let's be honest, we're still already $500 less than what we originally thought. So now that this spreadsheet's set up, it has all the formulas inserted into it. You've got your green zone, your yellow zone, and your red zone. You've got your original budget. You've got the one that you want to stick to. Let's just work out if, for instance, we did actually... For some reason the flights went up as you can see this formula carries all the way through to your overtime hours so if for some reason the flights went up by five hundred dollars you'd need to work nearly 15 hours of overtime to cover it then for some reason let's pretend we get a special accommodation deal it's just something happening that reduces it now we only have to work four hours of overtime so it's pretty reasonable. Like I would like to think your hours of overtime could be managed within a week. You probably wouldn't want to be counting on much more than that, depending on when you're planning to go on this trip. 